Hi, welcome to LN 3320. Um, along with the information that I've given you already on realistic fiction, I wanted to talk for just a little bit about uh, death in children's literature and how it shows up. Um, so first, I want to go through some developmental stages in how kids understand death. Um, these are not completely set in stone. There's some some back and forth in these stages and um, some flexibility in terms of ages. So um, the first stage we think of with our youngest kids, two to three year olds, toddlers, um, and what kids at that age really notice is that there are changes in the environment around them. They can sense or feel that something is a little bit different even if they don't fully understand it. And one of the things we can do with them if we're um, teaching children of this age is uh, to make sure that we keep their schedules regular and consistent. Um, they're sensing some instability, some changes in the environment. So if we can work to keep schedules regular and consistent for them, that will help um, to um, make them feel a little more confident a little less uh, uncertain. The next stage we talk about is with students who are about four to five years old and this is where they kind of have some fantastic ideas about death. Um, it says on the screen fantasy about death. Um, I don't mean that they're interested in reading fantasies about it. Um, uh, what I mean is that they don't always understand that death is final. So they have these fantastical ideas about it. Um, with kids at this age, uh, again, we're not trained to be bibliotherapists, but it's good to share um, picture books with kids that might deal with death and can help them understand that it's um, a final thing. Uh, the next stage is really 8 to 10 year olds and you'll notice that there's um, kind of a gap here. We go from 4 to 5 year olds to 8 to 10 year olds. So what happens is kids may stay in that 4 to 5 year old stage a little longer or they may move to this 8 to 10 year old stage a little sooner. So um, in this stage children start to develop a factual interest in death. So they uh, may be brimming with questions. They want to know when it happens, what happens to the body, that kind of thing. So when kids are here, uh, it's good to make sure that you have some informational books around that maybe touch on like burial practices of different cultures or things like that. Um, and then the last stage, that kids go through is the idea that death is inevitable. This happens at some point in their adolescent years. Um, they're starting to realize that no matter what, you can't change it. Everybody is going to die at some point. Um, and so for kids at this stage, uh, they can become a little bit morose as they start to realize that everybody's going to die. So what you want to do is make sure you focus on the positive aspects of life um, and the things that uh, as human beings we can control. When we think about death in children's literature and how it shows up, um, most often what we see uh, are stories that involve the death of a pet, a grandparent or a peer. Uh, and publishers tend to put out stories like that because uh, having the death of a sibling or even the death of a parent uh, is a little too close to home for children. And so you tend to see that um, books for elementary school age children anyway, uh, if there's going to be death, it involves, it involves the death of a pet, a grandparent, or a peer. So the last thing that I want to talk to you about um, linked to realistic fiction is um, a, a group of critics who are known as the cult of kill critics. And there's a lot of information on this slide, so I want to explain this to you a little bit. Um, when we look at lots of um, both realistic fiction and historical fiction, 
aimed at kids who are in upper elementary school all the way up until about high school, we tend to see that the main characters go through rites of passion, passage. Um, some people call them initiation rituals uh, that signify girls are becoming women, boys are becoming men. Um, so for example, girls getting their period, that would be um, a, a rite of passage or a boy and a girl going on their first date. That might be considered a rite of passage. So this group of critics called the Cult of Kill, um, they, uh, they call some of these rites of passage the Cult of Kill. And what they do is they look at books, we'll give you a few uh, titles as examples, Old Yeller, um, some of you may have seen that Disney movie where the little boy Arliss has a beautiful golden Labrador dog who um, he has to kill because the dog uh, comes down with rabies. A Day No Pigs Would Die is another book that these researchers or these critics cite. Um, the Yearling is another one. Uh, and what these critics say is that looking at books like this, uh, these books give American boys, specifically, the message or the idea that in order to become a man, you have to kill the thing that is nearest and dearest to you. That's why they cite Old Yeller. Arliss is in love with his dog, Old Yeller, and he has to kill it uh, because it has rabies. And so all of these books that the Cult of Kill critics cite uh, have main characters, male main characters, in which they have to kill something that is near and dear to them. So what these critics say, um, the, the harm they believe is that this kind of stereotyping for boys can be just as damaging as the kind of stereotypes that are out there for girls. And so they tend uh, to warn people against these kind of books. So that's it for realistic fiction. Um, and uh, tune in next for information about informational books.